study together, and we learn together, we work together, and we prosper together. It is my pleasure to welcome our viewers around the world to today's Education USA interactive series web chat on exploring community colleges in the United States. My name is Alfred Ball, representing Education USA in the Bureau of Educational and Cultural Affairs at the United States Department of State. Education USA is the department's network of international student advising centers in nearly every country of the world. Our more than 550 dedicated advisors help international students and their families navigate the American college and university admissions process by providing accurate, comprehensive, and current information about the full range of higher education options offered by the more than 4,700 accredited American higher education institutions. Today's interactive webinar is part of a series aimed at providing you with up-to-date information about current topics related to American higher education. Throughout the program, our panelists will answer your questions submitted in the chat space next to the video player. You can also share your questions and comments on Twitter using the hashtag EducationUSA. Today's online discussion will include information on how two-year programs of study offer high-quality academic and technical training, cost-saving options, and opportunities for easy transitions into four-year degree programs for international students. We are pleased to have two panels to answer your questions. The first is made up of two community college administrators and will be followed by a panel of two students currently studying at community colleges in the United States. Dr. Anise Appel is the Assistant Director for the Center for International Education at the Northampton Community College located in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. She assists in the development, management, and implementation of international programs and supports the network of international students on campus. She also facilitates the study abroad programs, which provided Northampton students with opportunities to visit and study in over 10 countries this year. Heidi Russell Kalkofen has worked with students coming to the United States for over 30 years on both coasts of the country and in both small, private, and large public associate degree granting institutions. She is currently an international student coordinator at Montgomery College, a large community college of over 60,000 students located just outside Washington, D.C. I would like to begin by asking each of you the same question. What is most special about the community college experience in your view? Anise. Well, I find it interesting that at uh, Northampton Community College, we have about 10,000 students that are enrolled, and we have a 600-bed facility. Um, we are the only uh, community college in the state of Pennsylvania to have a residence hall. And the important word to focus on is community. Um, I think about last year, a student that had been traveling for three days who came from uh, Eastern Africa. And he arrived at our doorstep. Um, he had been accepted to the college, but he didn't realize he needed to fill out the paperwork for a residence hall. So what we like to do is build a relationship with the individual. So for that particular student, we made sure that he was fed for two or three days. We made sure he had accommodations in a, ho a nearby hotel. And while all of that was happening, we filled out the paperwork to make sure that he could move into the residence hall. So for us, um, a community college is about the relationships that we build with each individual. Heidi. Thank you. I think the word community is important because when we talk about our community, we're part of a community. So our community college doesn't have its own hairstylist or its own post office. You live in the actual community. That's what you're there to do. And then you come to the college. What that means as well is that we're really connected to our county. So in Maryland, where I'm now, the counties run the community colleges along with the state. Where I was in California, it was a community college district, but it was still its own entity. So it wasn't connected to the federal government. It was connected to the state and the local area. And what that means is that those colleges then are responding to the local area. So for us, for example, we have um, Marriott International Hotels in our county, so we have a very robust hospitality management program. We also sit where the Human Genome Project work does all of its magic in um, biotechnology, so we have an amazing biotechnology program. We need to respond to that in order to prepare our students. 
for the, the rest of their education because that associate degree is really just the first part of that whole bachelor degree program and moving on in higher education. Thank you both. Very interesting. Let's go back for a moment and tell our viewers um, what are community colleges and how do they fit into the U.S. higher education system? Please. Well, at Northampton Community College, and I, I'll speak a little for Heidi as well, um, the community college offers the first two years of the higher educational degree. And for Northampton students, and I'm sure as well for Montgomery, um, students um, can come in. We have an intensive English as a second language program. So even if you have already an advanced degree from the country that you're from, you can come to Northampton and finish a credential and improve your English skills, which would then allow you to move on to additional programming. In addition to that, it also serves as a pathway for a diverse community to gain higher education. Um, we serve a diverse community of learners, um, from those who are uh, English as a second language speakers. As, and myself, I actually attended a community college um, because I didn't have a prerequisite to go on to a master's program, and this was many years ago. But it really serves the community in a broad variety of ways. Thank you. Heidi. So I think what's special about the associate degree, because I've worked at public and private institutions doing the associate level education, is that it focuses in the United States, we want to have a liberal arts education to liberate the minds of our students. And a lot of that is focused and concentrated. That wide variety of courses that students take is concentrated in those first couple of years of education, the first half of that bachelor degree. And so that means that all the students on your campus are really looking at doing that very important work of deciding what they're studying and getting that basic broad grounding in all the other areas that allow students to be creative and innovative by being able to make connections between different types of things. So that associate degree has a very special purpose. It's also its own credential so that if you need to complete and stop for a time before you move on, that's you can do that. But I don't know about Pennsylvania, certainly in California and Maryland, it's also something that the states do when they fund to say, we want our students at the lower division level to go to the community college because that saves our money for our universities to focus on higher uh, research and upper division work and PhD research. And so they really guarantee, Maryland and California both basically guarantee that if you get an associate degree, you move directly into the state university system. They are really just the first part of that whole state university system. Is that the main difference between two and four year between two year community colleges and four year institutions, or what what would you say the the main differences are? Um, I think there's a couple of things to talk about um, in terms of the differences between a two year and four year college. At Northampton, we like to say, although we're a two year college, it has a four year feel, and that's because we have many articulation agreements um, with state colleges. We've had graduates of Northampton Community College to move on to prestigious universities, some of them even in the Ivy Leagues. So it is great for an international student in particular um, whose transcript may not reflect the rigor, the academic rigor that we look for um, for a student who perhaps finished their high school uh, lessons here in the US. But it's a great pathway for them to enter, get the two years. Um, in fact, we had a student who um, won the Jack Cook Kent Scholarship, which was $100,000. Um, and he had a choice to attend any college in the nation. So as an international student, it's a great pathway for you to enter the, education, the higher educational system here in the US. Thank you. Heidi. I, I agree. I think that we've had students that move on to all kinds of institutions because we're in the greater D.C. area. They go to Georgetown and America and all kinds of great places. And so I think we have to help our students understand that the academics are exactly the same as the lower division coursework that they would get at any high quality institution university. For us, many of our faculty are the same. But in addition to that, we serve the community in other ways. So we have credential programs and specialized programs where we do training that may be for a shorter time than the just the beginning of university study. And that means we also have professionals in fields that come in and teach for us. So we have the faculty that we may share with our neighbor universities that are teaching with us with their academic rigor, but we also have people directly from the field. And that's particularly useful, of course, in things like business that come in and can teach to our students in their community. So do community colleges have the same high quality academic standards as four-year institutions? Absolutely. I definitely say that. <laughs> Northampton Community College has had three of the last seven professors of the year for the state of Pennsylvania. And that is a huge 
um, accolade to the quality of the instruction, the academic preparation that our instructors um, impart upon our students. Absolutely, and, and I agree, we have high quality students. But I think the articulation that you were talking about before is the other important part. If Georgetown University is going to take our courses directly and transfer and say they are exactly the same, they're recognizing that those are exactly the same courses. So why are community colleges a particularly good option for international students? Again, um, you know, I'm first generation American, so I understand what it may feel like to come into the United States and, and not be able to attend the college of your choice. My father, for instance, he had graduated from high school in his home country, and when he came to the United States, um, it was challenging for him to get accepted into a four-year university. So he attended a community college. It is a great pathway um, to prepare yourself for the continued study that you'd like to pursue. In addition to the fact, again, a community college is a community. Um, at, particularly at Northampton Community College, it's a family. Um, our associate dean for the Center for International Education, Dr. Manuel Gonzalez, as well as uh, Patty Bullis, who's been at the, they've been at the college between 26 and 30 years, um, collectively together, um, they, they have built a rapport and a relationship with our uh, alumni. And we've seen marriages, we've seen children. So it is a community. It is not just come, get this credential, and move on. We actually keep in touch with you, and we you know, encourage your success. Oh, well said. I agree. Ex excellent. <laughs> um, do two-year institutions have the same accreditation process as four-year institutions? Yes, it's the same one. We're in the middle of going through ours now. So. Um, institutions in the United States are regionally accredited and therefore they are accredited by their peers and it's exactly the same process. They're looking at all the same things and they are seen in the same way. And it, again, since all of that coursework does transfer over, in fact, for many institutions, if you achieve your full associate degree, it just transfers as a block of courses, then it, it really has to look exactly the same. Okay, going back to international students at community colleges, um, what would you say are the, are the biggest opportunities for them uh, at your institutions and at community colleges uh, generally? I would say, um, much like even the native-born American students, um, the idea of pursuing general studies. At Northampton Community College, we have preferred deadlines, but we really bend to meet the need of the students. So. Um, our spring semester deadline was November 17th, but we may have students that apply um, in December. And again, this goes back to that personal relationship where we work with the student independently to assure their success, to make sure that they're accepted and they are pursuing the pathway that will gain them what their ultimate goal is. I think for us, again, it goes back to that community so that we do have that relationship with the community. So students who want to pursue their education and also get some experience in their field have the opportunity to do that. And it's very local and it's very connected. The other thing that I think is important, at least at all the institutions I've worked at, is that those lower division courses, if you go to a large institution, you may be in an introduction to psychology class with a thousand other students. We don't have a classroom that even seats that many on our campus, so I think our largest classroom is probably 80. So one of the greatest opportunities is the chance for students to get to know their faculty. They're expected to get to know their faculty, and their faculty are there to teach. They're not there to do research. They're not there to do anything else. They're there for their students. So they get that opportunity to really get to know faculty and to have those connections in the community. It's very interesting. Sorry. Do you want to... I just want to add one other thing. I believe also community colleges, we have open enrollment policies. So um, for at least for Northampton, you don't need to have ILETs or TOEFL scores. Um, you come in and we'll get you squared away with our um, English as a Second Language program. But the idea of knowing that if you apply, you meet the basic criteria of the age and the high school diploma, um, you're accepted. So yes, I think most community colleges want just completion of the equivalent of secondary education um, as their academic credential for admission. At our particular institution, we have a variety of wonderful language schools near us so that we do have a floor for English level before we can accept students. So we do need things like IELTS and TOEFL. But each community college is going to have, again, that brings in a diversity of students, too. So you've got students who are looking for a variety of different outcomes. They may want technical training or they may want their university degree so that we can offer that to all of our students. 
Before we move on to our next question, just very quickly to go back to English language training, um, can you talk a little bit about the specific training that you do in, in English for students? Uh, I, is there any for prospective students, or is it once students arrive, and then what happens as they proceed through their, through their, their studies? Okay. At Northampton Community College, again, you don't have to have TOEFL or IELTS. Um, you apply, you meet all of the guidelines for the application process, we accept you. Once you come in, that's when we conduct the placement test. The placement test will tell us um, where you sit on the scale of reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And once, we, once you've taken those tests, we place you in the appropriate coursework, and you have basically someone who's holding your hand through that whole process. Um, some students um, may complete uh, English uh, one through four in the first year and a half, um, depending on the student. But again, we, we work with each individual student. We meet them where they are to help them to get to where they want to go. So on our campus, we have basically three levels of English. So we have English as a second language, which is designed for students who are really preparing to start academic study. We have English courses that are college level English, but for non-native speakers. And then we have students who are native level English speakers. So in that middle level, our students are able to sort of mix both English and other courses. So I say you may start with your English and you mix in with some of your degree courses and then you move to all degree courses eventually. So it allows students to transition. That gives them the chance to be part of a college community and be on a college campus, do all the fun things like go to all the games and go to all the productions and the performances and to be part of all of that. But they're also working on their English as well as continuing to prepare themselves for their degree level study. So our next question from our viewers uh, goes to something you just mentioned, being part of a community and how special a part uh, that is uh, of the experience of being at a community college. college. Uh, why do your institutions seek to enroll international students and how do they be become part of your communities? Well, our president at Northampton Community College um, feels that internalization, internationalization is a very critical component. It's actually one of our strategic priorities. It's diversity and global, and global engagement. So we are actually seeking to increase the number of international students um, so that the experience of our traditional students, in, in parentheses, um, is enhanced. The opportunity, again, to build these relationships with individuals and not the idea of just the paper. Our study abroad program uh, works through that as well. We've had international students participate in our study abroad program, um, which may be something they may not have been able to do previously. And that's how we build those relationships, one person to another person. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, every year I say to our students that are getting ready to graduate at graduation rehearsal that when we poll our American students, our U.S. born students, that one of the things that they highlight most specifically about being at Montgomery College is that they've had the chance to meet all these people from all over the world and how exciting that is for them, that they really appreciate that. We are fortunate where we are to be in a very diverse community, so that the diversity is, is reflected. It also means that there's somebody around to tell you where the really good food from home is. But that allows us then to really highlight and focus in on why we want to have these students because we also have immigrants from those countries, from many of those same countries, and they also want to understand what's going on in their countries currently. So it makes for a lot of good conversation. So is it fair to say that international students fit into your strategic plans and vision for your colleges? And, and if so, how, you know, how do you see things developing? Oh, they definitely do at Northampton Community College. Um, we have over 60 clubs and organizations for our students. And one of those organizations is the International Student Organization. And in fact, today at this moment, um, actually in about an hour, there's an international student presentation in alignment with International Student Week. Um, so as a college, we come together, we enjoy the diversity of the cuisine, the music, the entertainment, and it really helps us to become a better more connected community. Yeah, I think for us, about 30% of our students are, are not born in the United States overall. And so it really is a very important part of our community to celebrate that diversity every opportunity that we get. And our students appreciate that, and our staff and our faculty and our president all appreciate that. So we, too, are celebrating International Education Week. So at this point in time, we've had celebrations on all of our campuses, and we're very excited to make our students a part of that. 
that's, a, that's quite an impressive vision. Um, our next question is, if you could tell us about the international student support services that you have uh, on campus. Um, are there clubs, special programs that students can take advantage of? How do they meet American students? Do they? So we, we have students from 45 different countries at Northampton Community College. And again, we have over 60 clubs and organizations for any student who's able, who would like to join. And it ranges from the International Student Organization to the Muslim Student Organization to a variety of others. Um, so through those opportunities, the students can meet and connect with other students. We also have um, twice yearly what we call a quad fest, where the whole campus, um, we have three locations plus online, where um, each campus can meet, they can, they can get together, meet each other, enjoy music and fun. Um, it, it's the support services in terms of tutoring, they're all free. Um, so we have a learning center. Um, so if they need some additional tutoring with their English or maybe they're taking chemistry, all they have to do is go to our uh, a learning center and make an appointment and they can meet with someone who will help them to study and prepare for the exams or any uh, other stressful. We also have um, counseling services that's available to our students that's free. Sometimes we don't always realize when we're undergoing culture shock. So it might manifest in a variety of ways. So our counseling department makes sure that they get to know each individual student. Um, again, it's that person to person connection to make sure that we can help them along their way. Right, so we too have our own offices that we work with our international students. We have some special programs when they first come in to help them get settled and get oriented. Because our general community is so diverse, we also have um, counselors that speak several different languages. We have a lot of opportunities for students to get involved with clubs and organizations. But I think one of the special things where we are right now in the greater Washington, D.C. area is that we have good connections with our embassies that are in the D.C. area, too. So there are lots of community events. Most of, I believe, most of the dependents and employees of these of the embassies live in our county. So we have lots of opportunities to come together. We just had big Diwali celebration at our civic center that our students were a part of and that we were able to be at. So we get involved with the community as well to get those kinds of programs working to support our students. Very interesting. Our, our next question is about how students move from community colleges to four-year institutions to complete a bachelor's degree. Could you talk a little bit about that process and what you've seen students experience? I think what, we, what you were talking about earlier with articulation agreements, articulation agreements are, are discussions and, and probably contracts between institutions. So some of it is very simple, as I was saying, in California and in Maryland and in many other states in the United States. If you graduate from that state's community college, you are guaranteed a place in their state university system. It's a simple transition. Uh, at our institution now, you fill out an application when you first come in and tell the university, the state university system, I want to go to you when I'm done. And then they know. And that way, they essentially save a place for you. They don't recruit as many students because they know they have students coming in from the community college. They've, they have saved a place for you. As far as the transition, we work also with the University of Maryland system to assist our students who are transferring. So we are developing a, a special international student transfer program because our students go there in such large numbers that we need to make certain that we have a, a very specific pathway. We don't have to repeat all the things they learned from us about how to deal with having a student visa and living in the United States. They just need to know what's different and what those transitions mean sure. because it really is a pretty simple transition for them. Right. For, for us at Northampton Community College, we like to say we're in the center of the action. We're about an hour and a half, an hour and 15 minutes from New York City, about an hour from Philadelphia, and about two and a half to three hours from Washington, D.C. So the transfer process um, does not just affect the Pennsylvania colleges. We have sent students, um, in fact, an international student from Kenya uh, recently graduated from Columbia University. So we work hand in hand with the individual to make sure that they are, their end goal is what we're working towards. Our transfer office works uh, very closely with them. And again, the Center for International Education, we're a team of individuals that are there to support you, um, not just through the educational process, but through some of those challenging times as well. 
Thank you very much. So with so many good options in terms of community colleges, how do students find the right community college for them, and what factors should they consider? Well, that whole community thing, you know, you've spoken about how you're working individually with students. Um, your population is different than our population, so some of it is about location and about size. Some of it is going to be about urban versus suburban versus rural, but certainly also want to look at the programs because our all community colleges specialize in something because they often do reflect that community. So again, for us, if it were biotechnology or, or hospitality management, then you'd be looking for something specific. If it is something more general, a lot of community colleges are going to be responding to the general needs that, that are seen all around the country. And you also want to see where they do have articulation agreements with, where you can transfer easily to. I always tell, tell students, figure out what your final goal is. And then when you step back, we can help you figure out how to get there. So I, I agree. Um, Northampton Community College, again, we have over 100 programs. We have micro-credentials. We have specialized diplomas, certificates. So you really have to look at what the institution is offering and make sure that um, that's the, the pathway, the foundation that you'd like to utilize to spring to your next step, even if the micro-credential is the next step that you want to take. Thank you. So we have reached the final question for this first part of our program. Um, could you tell us a little bit about what makes your respective institutions uh, unique and special, Northampton Community College and Montgomery College? Again, I think it's, it's, it's the relationships. Um, again, the associate dean, uh, Dr. Manuel Gonzalez, has been there for 26 years. Patty Bullis, who's doing international um, admissions for 30 years. We have someone who works in our admissions office. Uh, his name is Mark Orris. He also, he's, he's the, the advisor for the International Student Organization. So our international students are different but the same in the sense that we embrace the diversity, um, but they're just like every other student. Um, and building those relationships where we're excited about having international students throughout, through our homes. Um, we have people that volunteer as host families. Um, so it really is, if you're looking for a family feel um, with someone who's going to hold your hand when you're in crisis and someone to kind of help you move along when you're stuck, um, that's what Northampton Community College is. Thank you, Anise. Heidi. Montgomery College is really so fortunate to have its location and its connection to the county and the state be such a central part of what it does. So our students can do internships at the Library of Congress, National Institutes of Health, the National Institutes of Science and Technology. And so because we have those connections and we have those opportunities for students because of where we're located and because of our connection to the community, we're really able to offer students a lot of chances to get experience in their fields which I think is a unique part of our institution. Thank you both for such valuable insights for our viewers. We are now going to move to the second half of our web chat to speak to two international students currently enrolled at community colleges in the United States. But first, we would like to show you some remarks by Dr. Jill Biden, second lady of the United States and a proud community college instructor. In my classroom, I have students from all over the world, from Africa, Asia, Latin America, the Middle East, and Europe. Most of my students are immigrants, and many of whom have left behind their families, their friends, and everything that was familiar to them to get an education in the United States. Because there's something, I think, very special about our institutions. They're open, they're diverse, and encourage free thought. We have such a vast and vibrant system that allows students to reach their full potential. I often say that my students are my heroes because many of them have had to overcome so many obstacles in life, conflicts, tragedies, heartbreaking losses but they're turning the page on their past. Regardless of their circumstances, they show up. They work hard and they believe, like you do, that anything is possible. 
I'm now joined by uh, Camila Matamoros, who is a student at Montgomery College. Camila is from Cali, Colombia, and is in her last semester as a business major. She told me she chose Montgomery College because of the diversity of students at the college, especially the opportunity for her to meet people from cultures she was not familiar with. Kevin Osoria is a student at Northampton Community College. He is the second of four children in his family and was born in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. He is a participant in the Community College uh, Initiative Program, a program sponsored by the Department of State that provides a quality academic experience at U.S. community colleges intended to build technical skills, enhance leadership capabilities, and strengthen uh, English language proficiency. Kelvin is a business administration major. Um, I'd also like to begin by asking each of you uh, the same question I did before. What is most special about the community college experience in your view? Kelvin. Well, basically I can say that um, the experience of being um, in a diverse community and uh, in this particular institution, Northampton Community College, I have the opportunity to not only uh, meet new Americans, but also I, can, I have the opportunity to meet a lot of people from other countries, which is very awesome. Yes. Camila. Well, same in Montgomery College. We have the opportunity to have people from all over the world. It's not only meeting um, the person, but also meeting their religion, their opinion about the, the, the world. So that's, that's amazing for me. Okay, thank you very much. Why, why did you both choose to study in the United States and at a community college? Well, basically, I am participating in the um, CCI program, Community College Initiative Program, which is a wonderful experience to in basically um, be in an American um, environment and have an American education, which is wonderful because uh, as I come from a third world um, country, sometimes, you know, um, it is not uh, really um, in my country, sometimes we don't really have the opportunity to uh, experience the, like different things like we do here. But uh, this particular um, program that I am participating in, I didn't have the opportunity like to choose the college that I was going to. However, uh, based on the interviews that I had before, uh, based on my interest, they, designed, they said that this is going to be the most um, convenient for me because here I have the opportunity to participate in different um, leadership programs, which is um, a, you know, a, a basically an open door to success. Yes. Thank you. Camila. Well, um, I chose the United States because, in my opinion, it's a great place. Um, Colombia is also very nice, but we don't have that much opportunity that the United States um, can give to us, especially to a student. My, biz, um, my major as well is business, so this country, it's a pathway exactly to success, um, especially in that, in that career. Uh, just picking up on that, that links to our next question. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your areas of study, about your interests, about how you envision your career? Well, basically, um, the opportunity of being here is to have an experiential learning in my business field. So I can say that Northampton Community College have given me the opportunity to not only know about the American culture, but also to know how you do business. So uh, through the leadership programs, I am able to grow not only professionally, but personally. And um, it's a wonderful opportunity, I think. Okay. Camila. Same, in Montgomery College, um, I was part of the business club. Mm -hmm. So in here we have learned, well I have learned, like how to um, do relations with people in order um, like connections with people in order to grow your business, um, same as leadership, it's, it's very important. So I have learned all of those aspects in Montgomery College. That will help me um, later with my career. Okay, thank you. We have a question from the U.S. Embassy in Dakar, Senegal. Um, could you tell us about programs uh, that your community colleges offer students in general? What are the wide 
uh, range of offerings that, that you have, um, not only that you found interesting, but that you see other students, international students, uh, studying or looking at? Well, basically the opportunity to engage with the community and be able to volunteer um, in the community, I think it's a wonderful experience. And um, also, we have the opportunity in Northampton Community College to go to um, different um, museums. And basically, I think it's a, um, it's a great opportunity to um, expand the skills. And uh, in terms of programs itself, as I mentioned, I was participating in a leadership program, which I find very interesting. And it gives me the opportunity to know people from um, the area and from other um, different countries as well. And uh, I also was participating in a etiquette launch, which I had uh, the opportunity to meet um, managers and business owners from the Lehigh Valley, which is a great opportunity to basically grow. Camila. Montgomery College has a program um, that is named Five Data Kappa. This program is um, for honors for students. So it doesn't give you only the opportunity to, make, to meet great people, but also to get involved with that community. So they have um, very like um, where we can go and help people from the church and like different activities to help the community as a whole. So both of you are studying business. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other areas that uh, international students choose to study? What are some of the best offerings or interesting courses that you have at your colleges? Well, in Montgomery College, we have pretty much everything. We have nursing, we have computer science, we have, um, what else? Yeah, those are like the most common ones. I'm sure some languages. Languages um, as well, yes, for sure. Okay, uh, excellent. Yes, in Northampton Community College, we have the opportunity to participate in the um, second language program. So basically, it gives us the opportunity to strengthen our abilities in the proficiency of English. And uh, I think it's a great opportunity to basically uh, interact with others and also not only that but uh, we also have the opportunity to participate in a communication program where the, uh, the college uh, you know put us in the spot of being able to uh, speak in public so it's a great opportunity to basically grow. And you're both doing a fantastic job about speaking to our viewers in public <laughs> we're really pleased at this. Um, so can you tell me, have you gotten involved in campus activities and activities in your community that are not just related to your studies, but uh, related to what uh, Anise and Heidi you know, described to us as the community itself, that is community colleges are so linked to their communities are really, and, that, and students become a part of the community? Absolutely, yes. Uh, that is one of the good things about uh, Northampton Community College that Northampton Community College gives you the opportunity to not only be a regular student, but also get involved in the community. For, exact, for example, I am right now volunteering in a church and in some other institution as well, and I am, part of a, um, I am a senator, I am from the student senate. So as part of our duties, we are um, actually the connection between the college uh, and the students as well, as well, we are their boys. So basically we make uh, decisions on their behalf. And what we're trying to do is that we basically um, approve um, clubs, we fund clubs, and also uh, whenever a student have a, a great opportunity, they have an opportunity to basically bring their ideas of activities that we can have um, in college. So basically what we do is that we give them support, we give them their uh, financial resources as well, and uh, we help them to contribute to our community as well because sometimes um, their ideas is to basically help the community. So they come for advice and we give them you know, the opportunity to have uh, the funds and also the people that can get involved in their activities.
as well. Let me quickly follow up because you are a member of student government. Mm -hmm. um, how do you feel as an international student being part of the leadership of the whole college in terms of deciding what students want to do, what their priorities are, uh, communicating with the administration? That's a lot of responsibility. Um, what does it feel like to have come from the Dominican Republic and then to be involved in the leadership of your college? Well, I can say that it is very challenging, very demanding, because I have to, let's say, as I am an international student, I have to be able to communicate effectively with them. And also, um, as I have different point of view, because I'm coming from a third world country, the Dominican Republic, uh, sometimes uh, I could say that one of the challenges that I have here is that their basically the environment, the, their culture is different than mine. So sometimes I have to adapt to their culture and also bring my cultural beliefs. Sometimes um, I can say that, you know, in this uh, particular position, this is a uh, leadership position, which I think is very challenging, like I mentioned. And uh, well, it gives me the opportunity to basically grow with them and also give my ideas and my voice to be heard. Thank you, Kelvin. Camila. Well, in Montgomery College, we also have a club that is um, called Voice for Animals, where we're trying to raise funds for animals um, to take them to the shelters or to make people like a little bit more conscious about um, these, these animals. Um, same in the business club, um, we were trying to raise funds for some women in Africa. So the whole idea was they, they created some necklaces and then in here we were um, selling them. And then with that money, we were able either to buy um, things for them or to send it back to their country in order to help them. I, I have to say, I find it very impressive. You are both very involved in your local communities, in your colleges. Um, you're certainly ambassadors for your countries uh, in your colleges and in the United States. Um, do, you, do American students reach out to that? I mean, do you get, are, are people interested? Do they, do you find that it goes both ways? Yes, I think that, yes. I mean, um, I think that they feel, um, I don't know, like that word, but I think that they feel like engaged um, in order for them to be also um, helping, help with us. Yes, absolutely. Whenever it comes, uh, whenever I go to an activity and I talk, they say, hey, what are you from? And whenever I say that I'm from the Dominican Republic, they always, oh, wow, you're from the Dominican Republic. Tell me about it. I mean, how is the weather there and everything? So basically, I see that it goes both ways. Mm -hmm. So their interest in knowing our culture is the same interest that we have to know the, their culture. Yes. That, that's fantastic. Yeah, it's, that's fantastic. It's very cool. So our next question is, uh, I think, is a crucial one. How did you both convince your parents to let you study in, uh, in the United States? You start with, uh, with you, Camila? Well, yes. Well, actually, my father, he was here. So, but he didn't want me to stay here, especially by my own. I don't have any family here. And I had only a few friends. So at the beginning, I had to make um, a PowerPoint presentation explaining like the pros and cons of why I shall stay here, of course, more pros than cons. So that, that was for him. And then for my mom, she was also a little bit nervous because she was like, I mean, you're going to be there by yourself. The language, the culture, and then, um, but I was able to convince her as well. So it ended up good. Okay. <laughs> well, Kelvin? this is the first time that I'm away from my country. And um, I could say, that my, my parents, they know that I am very independent. So when I told them that I wanted to come here to study, they said, Kelvin, are you sure? And I said, yes, I am positive. I will go and I will do it and I will succeed. And they said, well, uh, we, always, um, we always say yes to whatever crazy idea you might have. So yes, we're going to say yes to this one as well. And we hope the best. 
Thank you both very much. I mean, you know, th this makes me think uh, back to my own college experiences and the fact that, you know, all of us, it, it's a crucial time in life. Lots of things are changing, lots of challenges. We're trying to imagine what does this mean for me? What am I going to do in the future? Um, you know, there are difficulties as well as opportunities and great experiences. Can you talk a little bit about the struggles or the challenges that you faced um, in college um, and, you know, how you've overcome them or how you've dealt with them? Basically, my biggest challenge has been um, adapting to this new culture, like in the classroom, for example, because in my country, I didn't have the opportunity to work the same way I am working right now, let's say um, in terms of my studies. Like right now we have um, an online platform that we have to submit our um, assignments and all that. So basically that was very challenging for me at the beginning. But then when you started to realize that in my particular college, Northampton Community College, I have a lot of people that are able to help me and able to you know, help me succeed. It's basically kind of a something good so this is how I have um, overcome that challenge. Basically, the learning center, I have been there a lot of times because, uh, you know, I was struggling at the beginning with um, some classes, but they helped me out. And uh, thankfully, right now, you know, I am on a good path right now, in a good way. Excellent. Camila. Well, my challenge at the beginning was the language. I knew a little bit back, back home, but when I got here, it was totally different. Um, but thanks God, I mean, uh, the American people, they have been very, very nice with me at college. The, we have high quality professors who have been there since the beginning to help me um, move on um, to where I'm, I'm now. So now I'm already almost um, near to graduation, which is very good. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes, and also not only that, but the professors in Northampton Community College, they have office hours. So they always motivate you to visit them in their office hours. So besides class, you also have an opportunity to talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, um, having a one-on-one -on -one conversation so you can succeed. If, you have, if you're struggling with something, you have the opportunity to let them know so they might know that you're from a different country. Maybe you don't understand a term because as we are, um, you know, as, as English is our second language, sometimes, uh, you know, we don't understand everything. But as we have the opportunity to talk to them directly, you know, it makes it easy. Yeah, Montgomery College also has those office hours and they are great because we have the opportunity to be, to be near to our professors so they might know the struggles that you might have either because the language or because you had like a culture crush, chalk. So, I mean, it's, it's great. They are very good people. That, that, that's great to hear. What, what are some of the things that have surprised you um, after coming to the United States, and how, how has your, you know, how have your impressions of the United States changed since coming here? Well, I have realized that you guys are very open to new ideas and very open to uh, new cultures. So basically, at the beginning, I thought that you were not like that, but now I realize that um, I have been treated as a family member right now. So I could say that everybody um, here is very friendly very nice, very open, and they are able to teach, you know, to teach you and uh, guide you through the process of being in a different country. I'm, I'm glad to hear it, but Camila? Well, at the, at the beginning, I thought that you were like a little bit disorganized. <laughs> but when I got here, I was, I'm Catholic and I went to the church. And in my country, we don't do a line um, to receive the communion. But in here, you got to do a line in order to receive a communion. So at that moment, I was like, oh, my God, these, pers these people are very um, straight. And even with the traffic, um, the respect that you have to the police, it's amazing for me. I mean, you see a police or an army um, soldier, and you're, like, glad to have it and thankful for, for that person. Keeping that idea, what is different about American classrooms and about the professors that you have um, that, you know, different from what you were expecting or what you had imagined? Well, I could say that um, in the American classroom, we have uh, like an interactive conversation. So it's not only the professor saying the class, but you have the opportunity to say your own ideas, 
which is wonderful. Sometimes in our countries, we don't have that opportunity. We just um, sit there and listen to the professor. But here we have the opportunity to, you know, say something and give your own opinion. Does it hear your opinion count? Sometimes back in our country, they are like a little bit more conservative. As you said in here, you guys are a little bit more open-minded. So what do you think, even though it might be different, it's also important and they take it into account. So given that interactive nature of the classroom, what do you do if you don't understand something? What do you do if there's a, like you said, if you don't understand a word or something isn't clear? I raise my hand. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, otherwise I'll, be, I'll get behind. And I mean, the professors, they are so good that they have already gave you like that. Um, they let you do that. You won't feel like un uncomfortable if you just raise the hand and say like, oh my God, I don't understand. As well, because the other students who might be American, they understand that this is not your first language. So, I mean, it's, it's amazing to have that support from the professors and from the students. Yes, I also raise my hand. I ask a lot of questions. Whenever I don't understand a term, I say, hey, um, can down. you please, can you please um, give me a little bit of explanation of that term? And no one has ever said, oh, come on, you know, let's move forward. They... No, they are very open. They, they actually, you know, give you the opportunity and say, okay, uh, what I meant was this and that. And for example, there are a lot of things that, um, you know, maybe sometimes because of a time, we don't have the opportunity to cover it in class. So they're when it comes their um, office hours. So we can be able to see them after. And so you're meeting with the professor, her or himself, in office hours. In office. Yes. That has been actually my experience right now. I'm taking economics 202. I have, at the beginning, I, I was struggling a lot. But I, I started um, going to the office hours. And my second midterm, it was great. Thanks to that, because the professor um, was open to explain me after class and like 101 um, situation which is even better. Fantastic. Uh, now you both sound like very busy people uh, in terms of studies and interests and your lives. Um, how do you balance you know school, family and work and all the opportunities that you have outside of school like sports and the, your volunteer options, um, you know all the things that are available to you at, at your community colleges? Well, at the beginning, I was struggling with it, uh, with it before, but then I realized that organization is the key. So I had an I have an agenda with me all the time, and whenever I have an activity, I write it down. Okay, on Thursday I have an activity, I write it down. So basically, I divided the activities by time. So I will say, okay, uh, right now I'm going to study uh, marketing, and I'm going to assign two or three hours a day so I can complete that assignment. And once I am done with that, I can move forward with the other activities during the day. And that is basically how I organize myself. And right now, I am succeeding because of that. But at the beginning, I was struggling because I didn't have like an actual plan. But then when I realized that organization is important, then I you know, decided to have a plan and write down everything so I can be able to you know, accomplish more and be efficient as well. Thank you, Calvin. Camila? Same. I think that um, writing everything in an agenda is the best option, just because at the end of the day, when you have already completed that assignment, you can just cross it out, and that's the best feeling that you can get, crossing it out, because you're already done with it. So it's, it has worked also for me. It sounds like you're both very entrepreneurial, that is, you're interested in many things, but through good organization, you can balance lots of opportunities. Yeah. Do you, are, the, you think, are there things that you would still like to do in the future in terms of what is you know, available to you where you've said, I, you know, I just don't have time or I have, too mu I have too much going on or do you find the balance about, about right in terms of you know, the, way, the way your lives are right now? Well, right now I have a balance right now, but um, I can say that right now I'm working on a project. So once I go back to my country, I'm going to travel the country uh, delivering motivational speeches. So what I'm doing, I am in my uh, preparation stage, let's say. So right now I am attending different um, leadership conferences, and I am reading a lot so I can be more prepared and give more to my country once I go back. So also here, I am working on a project to you know, do um, kind of the same thing, like um, go to different nonprofit organizations like Boys, Boys and Girls Club 
to basically uh, deliver motivational speeches, but this time I am partnering with um, an ex-convict, so he's gonna give his basically life, you know, changing experience, um, a speech about how his life have changed since, you know, he has been working, um, he has been in a different program to, you know, basically overcome, you know, their obstacles, his obstacles before. So I think is that it gives me the opportunity to not only get the ex experiential learning here, but also um, I'm going to be more effective once I go back to my country because of this great opportunity. That's fantastic. Same well, right now I'm working in the International Student Office at Montgomery College as the manager. So this experience has, I mean, has been amazing. So right now I'm trying to finish um, this period with that until graduation. And then after that, I'm hoping to do OPT, which is also another opportunity for international students to work um, in, in, in any field in our major. So for now, right now, I, I think that I'm balanced with what I'm doing. So, I mean, I hope that in the future I can start getting some more experience towards my, my field. But for right now, I feel that I have done well. So how, speaking about the future, how do you think that your current experience in at a community college is going to impact your you know your future when you are looking for jobs well i could say tremendously yeah. this opportunity oh it's a huge opportunity and also not only it looks good on a resume mm -hmm. but gives me the basically notion of the environment that i'm going to be working um in the future same. Um, I mean, this, oppor this opportunity working at Montgomery College gave me um, like the experience of how to do an interview because it's totally different back home, same as writing a resume. So, I mean, this has been great because um, all the skills that I have acquired from this job will benefit my future in, in other jobs. Thank you both. So we have reached our final question, which is um, what advice would you give prospective students, viewers, or anyone else who uh, is thinking about uh, studying in the United States and considering studying at a community college? Well, I can say never stop dreaming. Everything is possible. I was back in the days, um, like around this day in time, back in the, in the years, I didn't even know that I was going to be here and look where I am. So never stop dreaming. Uh, focus on the things that you would like to do. Don't focus on, the, on your basically general uh, situation, but see outside of the box. Yeah, that's true. I think that if you have that dream of being outside of your country or meeting um, some new people just go for it because you don't know what's going to happen next and for sure it's gonna be good if you follow um, your dream and what you want to do it, it will be good for sure. Well unfortunately we are we are almost out of time but I wonder if each of you have a few has a few parting thoughts for our viewers. <laughs> Kelly, <laughs> you, you gave a lot of encouragement um, anything you'd like to say about a community college to end? Well, basically, um, Northampton Community College, it's not only an institution, but a family. Like, the first day that I came here, that I uh, went to that particular institution, I felt like at home. So I said, this is not going to be uh, something different than my family. So this is my new family right now, and I'm very proud of them. That, that's inspiring. Well, Montgomery College, or a community college, as its name says, it's a community where if you are struggling, there will be someone um, supporting you. So don't, don't just um, let your thoughts go if you are feeling like um, that you are struggling, just go for it because there will be like a family that will be able to support you. Well, thank you for joining us today, uh, Camila and Kelvin, and thanks to Heidi and Anise, who joined us earlier in the program. You can find more information about studying in the United States by visiting the Education USA website at www.educationusa.state.gov. There you can find information on the five steps to U.S. study, locate an Education USA center in your country, one of 413 around the world, 
Connect with us via social media, learn about both in-person and virtual upcoming events, research financial aid opportunities, and much more. Thank you, and please join us for future Education USA interactive web chats.